Hey guys, welcome back to Sean Does DIY. With my shop upgrade, I got so many shelves and drawers and cabinets and everything. I had this big wall right here behind me. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I didn't really need any more cabinets up there because I got so much storage elsewhere. So I decided, you know what? I think I'm gonna try a French cleat wall. I've never built one. So I said, this seems like a good spot. Uh, I don't need a lot of space, um, but I can go ahead and do, you know, three or four rows or whatever up there. And, um, you know, then I can hang stuff easy to get to, etc. So, yeah. Cool, French cleat wall, let's get started. As you can see, I cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood uh, and stained it and then put it up on the wall into the studs right here where my first French cleat row is gonna be. Um, and then I didn't put any more into the wall yet because I want uh, the, the screws to go through the cleats and you know through the plywood into the studs to help hold it, but I didn't want, you know, them visible except for the ones that are on the cleat. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so now that I've got this all ready to go, I just need to determine how long my cleats are gonna be. I'm gonna go ahead and go from the wall of that shelf all the way to the wall of that shelf. Um, and then however many up. I think I'm gonna do like three inch cleats. I'm not gonna put anything super heavy up there that I can think of. Um, so that should be plenty and that'll probably give me, I don't know, it's like three feet tall, so. Um, I don't know how many that'll give us. We'll cut a bunch and see what happens. All right, so let's go ahead and measure here, see what we got. So we're right at about 80 and 3 eighths, exactly 80 and 3 eighths, so cool. All right, so I'm gonna get a piece of uh, some more plywood out and uh, we'll get it uh, ripped and everything and get these things up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to 80 and 3 eighths and then we'll uh, you know rip it down to size. This way, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this little chunk off, 16 inches or so. 80 and 3 eighths. And so actually for me, because I'm gonna use this thing and this saw, I gotta add an inch and a 16. So 80 and 3 eighths, 81 and 3 eighths, 81 and 7 sixteenths. 81 and 7 sixteenths. All right. Whoa. Getting away from me. On this side, 81 and 7 sixteenths. 81, 7 sixteenths. Yep. Double check this other one. Gotta definitely double check these days, man. Wood is expensive. Yowzers. Let's see, 81, 7, 16. Okay. Perfect. Now, you know, there's all kinds of ways you can cut these things. People do all kinds of stuff. Um, but these things right here, I found these on Amazon. These things are great, man. I got a four foot one, or actually, it's actually 50 inches. There's a three ish foot one and a two ish foot one. I just stick this guy on here, loosen it up. Line my mark up on either end. And lock it in place on that end. And mark that right there. Come on, there we go. Get this mark. Looks good. Lock it down. And then this is my guide. Super easy. I don't hit the saw. <laughs> Put a dead battery on here. Sure did. <laughs> dead battery. That one's completely dead. There we go. So I'm gonna rip these to seven inches and then we'll split them in half at 45 for our uh, cleats.
Got this cool little thing. When I turn my, uh, it's like a plug do, when you turn my saw on, it automatically turns the, the back on, then it runs for like 10 seconds or something and then it shuts off once I turn the saw off. Pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so now let's set our fence to, so I'm thinking three inches. I cut the seven just to give me a little extra just in case. Thinking three inches this way. Yeah, should be plenty. And we'll set the blade to 45. Now I know my saw is just good, but I always like, especially when I'm doing an angle, I always like to throw the, uh, the little dealing bopper on there. Uh, digital angle finder, so I'm gonna raise it up. And make sure that's at zero. Zero. Raise it up a little bit more. And actually, we're gonna have to put it on the other side. <laughs> so, zero. And, here I'll get the GoPro. We can see it together. Let's see, hopefully the battery's still good. I'm gonna put it right here on this little handle. Oh, maybe, right here, I'll put it right here. So we got it set to zero, put it on the blade, 90 at the blade. Now we're gonna rotate her over to 45. Doop, 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 45. And it's a good time to check the uh, pointer too. Make sure that's all still good. Okay, let's see, we have 45, 3, 2, oh, 45, point zero right there. Let's see, my pointer is dead on. That's good. Right, lock it in. Okie dokie. Now, we'll go ahead and cut them. Yeah, I'm gonna set my fence to three inches. That should be good. Nope. <laughs> All right. Let's see how we did here. This one's gonna go somewhere over here. Look at that. Man, there we go. Don't even need any screws, like a glove. It's good to go. I'm just kidding. Hmm. Wonder if I can cut it shorter. Three inches. It's about so that's about three and a three quarters-ish on the back side on the that side. Um I mean I guess that's alright. I might cut an inch off of them, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna cut one and see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Yeah, I think I like that better. All right, so I need to figure out how many I want. So if we do, let's see how much space I got after that one's up there. So we got, let's see, the bottom of that's at 28. And if we do what, how much space do we need between them? Do you like, so the top of that one's at 26 and 5 eighths. If we do, or 25 and 5, 25, oh my gosh, wow, 25 and 3 eighths. If we do three inches between each one, I think that should be plenty from the peak here to the bottom of the other one. Yeah. So we need uh, somebody that can do math a lot better than I can. 
Uh, let's see. One, plus three, two, three ish, four, five, six of them, maybe? I think six of them should get us there. All right. So let me get those uh, cut, ripped, whatever we want to call it, and we'll get them mounted. Now that I have the French cleat rows stained and drilled, I can go ahead and put them on the wall. Now I went ahead and pre-drilled them to match up where my studs are. Um, and luckily for me, I mean, I did it on purpose, of course, it actually lines up perfectly where there's about a half inch here and a half inch on that other side um, where the studs are and then 16 inches in between, except for this one, for whatever reason, when they built this house, it's over here instead of over there. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that is the wall for the door, the main door on the other side of there. So that's probably why that's like that, um, which is fine. Uh, so this one will just go in through the, the uh, three quarter and I'll be fine. Everything else will be in the studs. I think I'm gonna go ahead and as I do the rows, since this one's there, I'm gonna just go ahead and drill this one through uh, the backing uh, into the stud, might as well. Um, so yeah. But first I need to go ahead and take out all of these except for that one so that I can uh, you know, drill in correctly. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, not all the way. Caught it. Ooh, it's hot. So we want to remember that the first row is really the kind of most important that I want to make sure is perfectly level. I mean, they're all going to be perfectly level, um, but I'm going to go off of that first row. And I went ahead and cut uh, just a piece of scrap plywood I had down to three inches because I'm going to do three inches in between each one. So this will just help me line it up. I don't have to measure. I'll still put the, um, the level on each one, just to double check. And my first one, I'm going to start at 10 inches up from top of this shelf here. And I went ahead and marked it already on either end. I'm just going to start on one end here probably and then mainly because 
that'll put it just above this. This is probably where gonna, I'm gonna store my drills. Someday I may make a something I could hang on here where you know they have a fancy hanger and all that stuff. But for now, that works for me. Yeah. So, okay, let's go ahead and get this first row going here. If I can not bump my head on the garage door. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this first one up. And I put the screws in there, pre I started them just to make it easier on myself so I'm not fighting it, you know, grabbing screws and all that stuff. Yeah, that's nice and tight, I like it. All right, where's my 10 inch mark? There it is, so I wanna start, oop, right in there. Pretty really good on that end. This one, oop. Raise it up a little bit. Where's my mark? Oh, there it is. I went too high. Okay, so right about there. That looks pretty good. I think that'll work just fine. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and drill this first one in. Right on my mark. Right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the level on it. See how we are. Pretty good. Needs to come down just a hair on this side. Not much. Oh. Tiny bit more. And uh, I think that looks pretty good. There we go. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just gonna keep the level on there while I screw them in. No, oh, I think I missed it on that one. Got it, okay. Whoa. And as we go through, I get this one on. I'm going to do this left handed. Ugh. Perfect. Cool. That looks pretty good. Nice. All right, so I'm just gonna take my little three inch strip here, stick it right on top of this one. Let's see. Make sure it's level. It's level. Take my second row. Stick it on there. Looks good. Go ahead and drill this side in. There we go. Wrench cleat wall. And we just keep going up however high you gotta go. And um, that's it. Cool. Looks good. While the stain was drying on the French cleat strips for the rows there, I went ahead and made a couple things to hang up there. Uh, here's a pocket hole jig. I just put this on here so I can hang it up wherever I want. And then I made something for my uh, battery charger for all my cordless tools. And I got the plug right over there on that wall so I can uh, hang it up there and then put it on there. Now this one, I added uh, an extra strip on the bottom here um, because I knew I was going to put it on that bottom one. And if I didn't, it'd be kind of all wobbly. So it's just a, a little support. Um, I can put that over there and then I can slide it over by the plug and get this all wrapped up nice and neat and put all my batteries in there. 
So then when I need them, they're available. And I can also take it off and take it away to a job site or whatever if I need to. So there we go, French pleat wall. I just got a couple more strips I need to put up. Easy. So yeah, it looks good. I'll figure out all kinds of fun stuff I can hang up there. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button. If you uh, like the video and you want to subscribe, that'd be pretty sweet too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.